Yeah, so welcome to Decoding Complex PCI. In this episode, I'll take you through ROTA through guide extension. I'm Dr. Sharath Reddy, Consultant Interventional Cardiologist, Director of CT1 Complex Interventions Medical Hospitals, Hyderabad. So first case is a case uh, wherein ROTA done through guide extension in tandem lesions in right coronary artery. So this is a patient, 68 year old, male post stat status uh, post CBG with uh, Lima 2 LAD done in 2019 but now presented with uh, ACS with NST and QMI. Uh, CAZ showed the two acid disease and Lima 2 LAD was patent. And the syntax score was uh, 20. Uh, he had fair LV function and RV function with normal sinus rhythm. He was diabetic and hypertensive. PCA was attempted outside but failed uh, as the wire, could, wire was not crossed uh, the lesion. So this was the anatomy, uh, left, left system showing you know uh, LMCA disease with the LCX also mildly diseased and uh, this was LED totally occluded uh, but Lima 2 LED was quite patent so and you can see the lima is quite patent, distal anastomosis. And this was a right coronary artery, we can see. So a loopy right coronary artery with a kind of uh, total occlusion, but we can see a TME1 flow here. So yeah, near total occlusion. And you can see uh, there are three brands within the right coronary artery. You can also see um, kind of calcium nodule, you know, sitting calcium nodule sitting in the proximal RCA. Uh, and the first uh, procedure was failed mainly because they couldn't able to cross the lesion. That was one reason. And the second reason was uh, uh, to, you know, uh, get back up for uh, wiring. They were not able to bring microcatheter beyond this place. So there was one obstruction here and uh, this was another occlusion. Uh, which didn't allow you know PTCA wire to go in. So we took patient for PCI. You can see here amplature was taken for a good support, backup support, and uh, this was fine cross and this is uh, a filler XTR wire. But fine cross was stuck at the proximal lesion. It was not getting advanced beyond this lesion. Uh, despite uh, you know balloon dilatation so we tried sending a balloon but it was stuck there we dilated but despite that you know uh, we, we were uh, not able to advance uh, fine cross but then we took a guide extension catheter with guide extension support we could able to advance the fine cross but the problem was uh, the fine cross was proximal to the distillation and we escalated Y to UB3 and we could cross, but UB3 was not going beyond this point because the guide backup was not sufficient. So that's when we decided uh, you know, to take guide extension further down, but the guide extension was stuck again at the uh, proximal lesion. So that is when we decided to go ahead with the ablation of this lesion. It's a sequential ablation. So First, ablate this lesion with the wire proximal to the distillation, create space, and then uh, start chasing the second lesion. So, uh, this was a rota ablation with uh, 1.5 mm bar. You can see. So, we ablated uh, this lesion, so which was like a calcium nodule in a subsequent IVIS. And uh, after adequate ablation, uh, we just came out and uh, then we could advance Corsair, you know, further down. And uh, yeah, we escalated to again UB3 and followed by de-escalation de to Fielder XTR. And we could cross the lesion and send the wire down into the distal RCA. And we also uh, uh, prepared proximal lesion a little bit further with 3.5 Wolverine just to make room for guide extension advancement so that you know we can advance uh, balloons across the uh, uh, lesion you know tough lesion tough distillation so yeah 
Despite guide extension and amplitude guide, we were not able to push Corsair catheter across the distal lesion. So that's when we tried grenadoplasty. You can see this is a grenadoplasty. So uh, this 1 mm balloon ruptured at 20 to 24 atmospheres. You can see the contrast extravasation into the tissues, okay? And post grenadoplasty, we could advance corsair a little bit beyond the uh, lesion. So you can see this is a corsair which just gone beyond the lesion. And that gave a room for uh, exchange of exchange to rota wire. So we exchanged to rota wire and then we planned the rota ablation uh, through the guide extension. So again, why guide extension for rota ablation in this case? So one is basically support. So you can see um, despite AL, uh, you know, Corsair couldn't be pushed across the lesion. So uh, that the support was not uh, very good. And second is the resistance at the proximal lesion. And uh, third is the bends, you know, uh, all these bends, when there are multiple bends and you know, when buries is going across multiple bends, there can be a furrowing effect which increases the chances of perforation. So by having a guide extension, we can, we can minimize the furrowing effect at the bends. So that was the idea why, you know, guide extension was used both for support as well as to prevent furrowing effect. So as, is, as in this case, you know, uh, guide extension was already in. So uh, we have advanced 1.5 bar. This is the seven French guide extension. But you can see the bar just going uh, eccentrically at the entry point of guide extension. This must be uh, mindful of while doing procedures. So uh, what we have to do is just pull the guide extension back instead of advancing the bar. So then the guide extension comes uh, over the bar and then you know we can advance uh, bar. So this is one care which we have to take and later we can advance guide extension. And you can see what exactly happens with the AL. When the guide is coming close to the proximal end of the guide extension, guide starts you know uh, 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 um, looking down. So and that basically, you know, your guide becomes non-coaxial with the right coronary artery. So that's when you can send, you know, your guide extension into uh, coronary and then advance. Basically, it's length kind of telescoping uh, uh, your bird through the guide extension into the coronary. So that's what we did. You can see this is a guide extension and which is crossing the first bend. So and then, you know, we advanced to burr and uh, we did ablation of the second lesion. So first lesion was already ablated and we are ablating the second lesion. So, so after uh, uh, two minutes of ablation, we could able to crack the distillation. Uh, but as I was showed a circumferential calcium, we also did IVL at the same site with three uh, mm balloon and post IVL, uh, post rotablation and IVL, we can see the luminaria at the site of, you know, the calcified distal lesion was around 3.4. And this was, uh, you know, proximal uh, to the lesion, distal lesion. And you can see this uh, very proximal right coronary artery post this uh, uh, calcified nodule. Uh, we can see the distillation, see this is a distillation, we can see clear, you know, ruptures uh, within the uh, calcium and you can see clear ruptures, so uh, that indicates, you know, the expansion would be quite open. Okay, so, and uh, uh, this is a distillation. So, and this is a proximal lesion. The most important is the proximal lesion, which actually obstructed movement of uh, uh, anti-grade gear. Uh, there it's only a calcium nodule. After ablation with the rota, uh, we have almost 5.95 minimum lumen area. So 
we avoided stunting this area we stunted only the distillation so we stunted distillation and now you can see this is the final result which we have got so a little bit of uh, slope flow but uh, it's okay and this was the final iOS so we got almost 7 mm square as the minimum stunt area 7.2 mm squared so I think this is a good uh, minimum stunt area so and we left it so coming to the other case where you can see this uh, right coronary artery origin is anomalous it's coming from the anterior part of the sinus which we can clearly notice this is the margin of the sinus but you know the origin is quite inside so that's an anterior origin so it's very nasty uh, you know then here uh, whatever guide you know guide won't become coaxial uh, for uh, you know further intervention so these are the cases where uh, you know you can anticipate difficulty in sending wire difficulty in sending and uh, uh, anti-grid uh, gear as well as uh, you know difficulty in sending even rotor ablation so you can see here how the guide was sitting and we just uh, um, nose dived with uh, cord side and then I am wiring so we just took cord side support you know to wire uh, the lesion so then this is a 1 mm balloon but it was stuck here it's not uh, getting advanced beyond the lesion and there is almost tram track calcium here so we did a granuloplasty but still uh, we couldn't cross the lesion and uh, yeah I did dilate with you know 2 mm balloon but uh, you know guide liner was not going beyond this point uh, because of the calcium here yeah, so we can observe here uh, how this AL guide behaves when we try to advance burr across the AL. So it was sitting uh, at the ostium, especially when the ostia, ostia ostium is uh, anomalous. And the moment it comes close or goes beyond the curve, the, the guide gets, uh, you know, uh, uh, the guide gets flattened and uh, you know, I mean, uh, non -co becomes non-coaxial, so it's tough to send uh, uh, rotablator across. So, so what uh, we did here is, uh, you can see when the guide is looking down, we ex we have advanced guide extension, used guide extension as a telescope or something like a shoehorn uh, to advance, uh, you know, rotablator into the. Uh, 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 coronary so so that you can platform rotablator inside uh, uh, coronary otherwise you know you you would end up in platforming with inside the guide and there is a possibility of uh, injuring you know iota as well so with that uh, we started rotablation you can see with it this is a 1.25 bar and this is uh, guide plus uh, guide extension catheter so and this is the final result you know which we have got uh, in this case and see uh, compatibility of uh, guide extension with uh, burr so guidezilla gives maximum space always use a burr uh, you know uh, burr which is at least 1.1 mm smaller than the inner lumen of the guide extension catheters that is you know the best way we can do and uh, guidezilla provides the maximum lumen area so we can see six french will accept 1.25 bar seven french will accept 1.5 bar and eight, eight french uh, you can use 1.75 but you will have some resistance but 1.5 can be eas easily used guide plus in the second case what i have used it takes only 1.25 it won't take 1.5 bar but guideliner so you can uh, send 1.5 in 7 french and 6 french easily takes you know 1.25 bar and loading a, a, a rota to guide extension there are two ways one is when already guide extension is inside uh, as already mentioned you know you have to take care when the bar is entering uh, guide extension and in this scenario, we shouldn't use Dynaglide for advancement. It should be only 
manual advancement otherwise uh, uh, it can uh, damage the inner lumen of guide as well as you know guide extension shaft and burr also can get damaged and this is the other way where you know we are just uh, i mean the guide guide extension is loaded onto rota wire and then rota blighter is loaded uh, burr is loaded through the guide extension and now while pushing guide extension this guide extension uh, sorry while pushing the rota burr guide extension is piggyback it uh, piggybacked into the uh, guide so this is another way you know we can load so uh, this is a guide plus and uh, when you use 1.25 through the guide plus this outer sheet uh, you know uh, uh, snugs uh, tightly uh, uh, holds the guide extension so when you are pushing the bird even guide extension also goes uh, inside uh, yeah where we use these things you know you can see yeah obviously you know anomalous RC origin and you know loops inside the coronaries that is uh, one way where we can use and also uh, when you are doing rotablation in LCX so we can just keep uh, you know uh, guide extension across the ostium and then you can do you know rotablation and sometimes we do see uh, loops inside the proximal LED in those situations just bring guide extension across one loop you know this proximal uh, just beyond the uh, upslope of the proximal loop and then you know you do which minimizes you know following effect to conclude guide extension assistance helps to overcome some rotablation challenges like the cases which I showed and guidezilla provides maximum lumen at all sizes when compared to other uh, guide extensions and bar advancement with guide extension try to avoid you know dynag light it's not recommended guide extension can be piggybacked on rotor bar in proximal coronary ablations uh, so that you can use if you have a difficulty um, uh, uh, in sending bar inside thank you and uh, you can subscribe to this channel to watch more and more such uh, cases uh, and techniques. Thank you.